the control of substances hazardous to health. Kosh. Hazardous substances are materials which can cause death, serious injury if inhaled, skin reactions, explosions that damage the environment. There are four routes of entry that hazardous substances can enter the body through. These are 1. Inhalation Breathing in the hazardous substance. This is the most common route of entry. 2. Ingestion This is taking a hazardous substance into the body through the food route. This is often linked to poor personal hygiene. 3. Absorption. The skin allows hazardous materials to pass through and to be absorbed by the body. 4. Penetration. Forceful breaches of the skin can allow hazardous substances to enter the body. Every year, thousands of employees are made ill through hazardous substances used in the workplace. The United Nations has set some rules, signs, and classified hazardous substances into nine categories for employers, employees, and students' safety, known as the GHS and CHIP, as follows. Classification CHIP symbol GHS symbol Very toxic Toxic Harmful, irritant, sensitizing, carcinogenic, mutagenic, toxic for reproduction, corrosive. Hazardous substances may have bad effects on your health when it comes into contact with your body either by spilling concentrated acid substances on your skin, or breathing it for a long time, which may damage your organs. But don't panic. If we control it by appropriate methods, it will present very little harm. It is the responsibility of the employer to ensure that monitoring and health surveillance are put in place and to use risk assessment steps as follows. Identify the hazards. Walk around your workplace, look in cupboards, examine the products used, and talk to the staff and students about the work they undertake. 2. Determine who may be harmed and how. The easiest way is to group people. For example, employees in the vicinity, other employees, students in the vicinity, other students, contractors, visitors, etc. Remember, some of them may be new in the workplace, inexperienced, pregnant, or with disabilities. This information is needed to be taken into account. 3. Undertake an evaluation of the risk. This is the step of the risk assessment which takes time. Risk evaluation is making the judgment. The risk assessor will have to identify what happens at present with regards to controlling the risk. This may be an existing procedure, equipment, information, instruction, or training. 4. Record findings. Write down the results of the assessment. The risk assessment will have identified controls, which some will be controls which protect all staff and students at all times. 5. Review the assessment and update as necessary. Risk assessments must be reviewed whenever they are no longer valid. This may have been caused by a change in staff, change in process, and an incident. Incidents. One of the key areas of a hazardous substance assessment is the requirement to identify what actions are needed to be taken in the case of incidents occurring. The main source of this information is the Safety Data Sheet, SDS which details the information as well as simple instructions often found on the label. 
Incident requiring action. Actions to be taken in case of fire. This will include the type of equipment needed, the clothing required to be worn, and the evacuation procedures. Action to be taken in case of emergency. Follow the emergency preparedness and guidelines as identified and categorized by Khalifa University EHS section. Conclusion. The substances and materials discussed do present risks in the workplace. Remember that the vast majority of employees and students work in a relatively low-risk environment. Suitable assessment of risks as well as the following control measures will ensure the risks remain low.